Any ganja crew, triple cheese. Hey. Yeah, let's go to the mountain. This man built an anti-gravity levitating machine. The reason that all your computer screens. But why are people having peanut allergies? If we if we shed a glass of water or any. Eat your body just for 15 minutes a day. Now what do you notice strange about this person? Looks human, right? Then why is it that this person has one, two, three lacrimals in each eye? Why is the eyeball completely flush, flat? Why is there a bone mid forehead? You're looking at ortho. George Adamski's contact. A picture, perhaps the only one, of an alien. Um, is it weird that this looks completely normal and not alien to me? But yeah, I do see there's some kind of bone in the middle. And the eyes just look like some puku eyes, you know? Is the entire society after them? And she's like, why is everyone after me? I'm just a regular... Never mind. Welcome back, goons. We are watching more For You page content. Creepy and weird videos let's get right into it make sure you interact with the video and it's commonly known in holistic medicine that a lot of the unclean animals are extremely toxic like pork do you know that's the never ending rotting meat it does not stop rotting it doesn't matter if you freeze it i don't even know if it matters if you dry freeze it maybe that would be different but it doesn't matter if you freeze it or not the meat continues to rot and it's parasitic ridden and the parasites are normally in cyst form so that means when you when you cook it, you can't kill them because they're protected. But the cysts get in your body and then they start hatching because they're in a nice warm environment and then you get parasites. So you cannot cook the parasites out of pork and the pork doesn't stop rotting. And we know pork is tied to a lot of health issues. Yeah, I have heard some crazy things about many meats. I thought all meats don't stop rotting. They just keep rotting unless they're fake, unless you're eating poison, healthy poison. Hey, manifest your own health. Uh, interesting. Let's keep it going. The reason that all your computer screens are blue lit, the reason none of them are red lit, the reason none of them pay attention to circadian biology is because that original technology was developed in a government program that Bobby Kennedy knows about and I happen to know about because I went to medical school at LSU. For those of you who've never heard about Operation Paperclip, you think it's all conspiracy theory. So at Tulane Neurology and Tulane Neurosurgery in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, the CIA started a program there where they would do all these crazy things to monkeys. And the CIA wanted to see how they could control things utilizing different things like drugs and things like that. Where the neurosurgeons got involved, which is my clade, we would drill help the tops of the heads off, put wires into the thalamus, put electricity in there, and kind of see what kind of behavioral changes we could have. One of the guys that was in that program was a guy named Professor Delgado. He got the idea to take it in a bigger animal. When he saw that we could control the behavior with the wired device, he said, what if we do it wirelessly? So he checked it in monkeys and checked it in bulls, and it turned out you can do it wirelessly with RFID chips and semiconductors. And the CIA took it to the next level. They said, well, well, since this is electromagnetic radiation and they begin on wirelessly, what if we did it through light through screens? And it turns out you can. And that's the reason why all your computer screens have the frequencies they have. So why is this all important? Wait, what? I thought those frequencies were to show like the color spectrum and stuff. What? What? <laughs> This is crazy. This is crazy. Gang stalking is real. This is a new form of gang stalking. They can just direct it right at you. Wait. Spiraling. It's by this only the third video. How am I spiraling? All right. We're going to keep it going. But why are people having peanut allergies? They're having peanut allergies because they've been jabbed with peanut oil. 1961, they put peanut oil into the jabs and people started developing peanut allergies. Why did they want to get people away from peanuts? Number one, you could run a car on peanut oil. Diesel will run on peanut oil. Number two, peanuts have a lot of great benefits for the body. Only in America are people not eating peanuts anymore, but everywhere in the rest of the world, they eat peanuts every single day. So if the peanut was as toxic as we were told, wouldn't all of the rest of the world be gone by now? The peanuts help with the lady parts right here. Okay, this is number one. Peanuts also help with the stomach and getting things flowing, that's a big business. And then they also help with the prostate. Those are three big businesses. If the peanuts are still on the shelf, 
people don't suffer from those three ailments or illnesses. You switch everybody to almonds, now they get a whole bunch of iron in their body. A whole bunch of iron. What does iron do? Rust. But almonds are just as good at that. Almonds, walnuts, aren't they all good? Oh my god. And just eat healthy at this point. You don't know what's bad. It's all healthy poison at this point. Um, yes, allergies are only in the United States. Yeah, no, no. Allergies are getting everywhere, but it does seem like it's a newer thing and more people are getting them. So introduce peanuts early to your children and don't let them have peanut allergies. Wait. Never mind. They introduced it in the... Never mind. Never mind. The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills and it's very brightly colored and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time and they begin to question, is this real or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered and they come back to us and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid ever because... This is just a ride, and we kill those people. <laughs> Shut him up. We have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This is, has to be real. It's just a ride, and we can change it anytime we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love instead see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now to a better ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded. And we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever. And peace. Okay, very interesting. Not sure about the space thing, but uh, you goons tell me. You goons tell me. Um, yeah, I like uh, almost everything this guy said. Best way to gain control of the most intelligent, powerful species on the planet would be to completely divide them from the love within themselves. As soon as they are old enough to begin creating an understanding of who they are, force them into a system that teaches them that it is wrong to be yourself if yourself is different from what is accepted as normal. Confuse them about their own biological makeup so that they think that permanently altering their body is the answer to happiness. Require their daily attendance at an institution that makes them focus only on the information that is provided. Make them attend that institution from age five until an adult and repeatedly test them on the information so that it becomes their truth. Give them an explanation to everything so that they never have a chance to make their own assumptions of the world. Scold them and humiliate them if they suggest an opinion that opposes that of their authoritatives. Keep reminding them of how cruel their ancestors were to each other in the past and broadcast how cruel they are to each other in the present. Only show them tragedies on the news so that they live in fear and think the worst of one another. Convince them that their species used to be that of an incognizant wild animal. Make them think that their very existence is so incredibly random that they lack purpose and struggle to make sense of a creator. Tell them that their kind is as smart as they've ever been so that they don't question the integrity of the system that they're in. Provide them idols with artificial beauty and use them as examples of what it is to look perfect so that they are never content with their own appearance and can't help but to compare themselves amongst each other. Goons, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for interacting with the video like the true goon should, because I know you did. Because I know you did. Um, yeah, I liked every single thing. This is definitely a systematic thing that is uh, against us, and we are goons that are perceiving and, and persevering. Perceiving receiving too i guess we're persevering we're persevering we're gonna win it all we're, we're gonna transcend together when birds chirp and crickets and frogs and all the noises in the morning even when uh, the dew that is still on the grass is a very special water it's not ordinary water it has been charged with frequencies and the birds chirping and the dew on the grass all of these are connected with the resonance of nature waking up, the cool is leaving the earth, and the air is heating up, and all of that is a tremendous change for growth, plant growth especially. But if we are aware that nature is accomplishing all of this quietly, silently, 
with frequencies. It can be beneficial for us to be grateful, be thankful that we are all part of nature and we all benefit from this. We're all one. We all need this. We're all together. You're with me forever. All right, we're going to keep it going. About two years ago, I did an experiment to see if there was any truth to what's called microplasma laboratorium, I guess, but it's better known as Morgellons. Uh, I went and got a microscope, the most powerful microscope commercially available to buy, and I got raw cranberry juice. You have ocean spray or nothing that's, you know, processed, and you gargle it in your mouth for about two to five minutes. And basically what this does is it pulls the, the synthetic fibers, synthetic microfibers or the nanotech out of your, I don't know if it pulls it through your skin membrane or if it just pulls it from your saliva glands. So I looked at the cranberry juice by itself to make sure there wasn't nothing in it so I could know what was already in it. You know, you could see like pieces of the cranberry skin or whatever. And so then I went and, and, and gargled it for about two to five minutes. And I spit it out and looked at it under a microscope, and clearly I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but there's something in there. And if you have uh, rubbing alcohol, you can pour it on it, and the motherfucking shit starts twitching. Wait, isn't this just like your mouth biome and the bacteria that helps break down food? Is that what's happening because you've been gargling it, and then you spit it back out, and that's what you're seeing? Nah, nah, you're just removing all the toxins. That, that's the only explanation. Well, what we do is... I've got a regular battery. By the way, uh, Teslas are powered by thousands of these things. This is normal light, okay? So if you take a shungite, piece of shungite, touch the center first, then bring it around and touch the center and touch the outside. So now you've made a, a complete electric circuit. If the shungite were not pure enough to conduct electricity properly, you're, you wouldn't get a light. You're making an electrical contact. Each crystal has their unique property, and that's why shungite is such a special crystal. Right, so shungite is, lets electricity pass through it. I mean, I'd rather have the quartz, I feel. Quartz is infinite energy. We got that shivalingam. We got that shivalingam. To Peru and to do ayahuasca, and I went into the realm where I met the blue-skinned Hindu gods. Blast off, leave my body, I enter this blue realm. It's a blue dimension, like ocean waves, and the whole backdrop is <laughs> just this crazy vibration that this portal opens up. Long, sleek, silver craft comes in. <laughs> and on top of it, there's all these beings blue skin they're adorned in turquoise gold copper and silver i was trying to like talk to them like hey hi i sent this vibration back and they're like there's no words there's nothing to do here but vibrate with us and i was like oh so we all start we all synchronized together it felt like bliss they were so like loving too it's like you might be us one day but like just sit from a distance and like appreciate each other there's nothing else to do here for you that was one of the most healing things of my life just to know that these gods you know krishna vishnu the way they're portrayed in the ancient indian art with the blue skin they are real and i met them and they're very strong very loving and very powerful psychedelic takeaway there's an infinite number of entities and variations of life forms out there friendly and want to hang out and exchange with us so psychedelics connect us to the broader sense of life out there those extraterrestrials and beings it's a portal to experience all that there is outside of earth and it's i want to go back it's a sense of childhood all like whoa the whole universe just got so much bigger whoa this is crazy this is crazy and i've seen my gods are depicted i'm hindu my gods are depicted with blue skin red hair you know i've seen the things i've seen the things it's also interesting is kyra has red hair and i'm like what does that mean that there was red hair in my genes too? Got that was something. Never mind, this turned Nathan says yes. Never mind, this turned to something else. I loved everything this guy said, and he doesn't even seem like um, you know, he's following any religion and to acknowledge that he's seeing these beings seems wild. Seems wild. Only one way to find out. We're gonna have to never mind, we're gonna keep it going. There's a scene in the first Matrix movie where Morpheus holds up a battery and says, The, the Matrix, Matrix is, is a computer generated dream world designed to turn humans into one of these, a battery. That is a profound statement in an apparently fictional movie. Well, we, we saw the child the kids' version in Monsters Inc. as well. That was another one. You had the monster world where the key monster was a green entity with one single massive eye. I mean 
the dollar bill. What happened is that in the monster world, they had no source of energy. And so in the power station, every day, the monster employees would turn up and they stand in line. And then these doors would come. And when they walked through the door, they walked into a child's bedroom. And their job was to terrify the child. So the child screamed. They caught the scream in a tube and went back to the monster world to power the monster world. It was very symbolic of, of how this works. They are telling you without telling you, if you know. Yeah. They only have power because you give it to them. And the way we give the power to them is through low vibrational emotions. And that's why they want you stuck in a job. That's why they want you doing all these low vibrational things, masturbating, consuming, because that's how fire keeps receiving energy. The minute you stop associating with these lower vibrations and you raise your vibration, the system will collapse and it's going to happen. Just watch. Wait, what's this guy's issue with self-love here? You stop it. You let, you keep doing the goon things. You say, don't listen to this. Never mind. Never mind. Yes, there's agendas out there. Um, they're definitely trying to take our energy. I'm sending the goons all positive, high frequency energy. I know the goons can feel it. Any, if you're going through something crazy, let us know in the comments. We're going to send you some positive, high frequency energy. And hopefully that passes, you know, we don't, and we, it has worked. We've helped multiple goons out from different predicaments that they've had. Um, if that's something you want to share with us, do let us know, but we are here for you. Um, and yeah, don't, don't help the systems. We'll help you. We are goons. We're going to win. We're going to win. Ow. I hurt myself. We're going to keep it going. Frankenstein factories where they create alien looking. There's no beings. question about it. I had a friend that worked up at the test site who uh, went to work in the 80s, the, the uh, early 80s, late 70s and early 80s over in Saudi Arabia. We sat down in the early 80s uh, at the, uh, my house over on the other side of town. There was kind of a lull in the conversation. He says, um, John, what do you know about cloning? And I said, nothing. I mean, this was so far out to me. And he said, just let me tell you, it's all real and it's all happening. And this is from Cecil McMaines, a guy who's so down to earth, who worked on the SR-71, who did a lot of stuff, you know. And he would never, ever come out with something so unusual. He said on level five, he'd walk on by and... People would be in cages and screaming, begging for, for help, and he was told to, I heard that. to walk straight on through and not look or pay attention. Yeah. These people are all mad. I heard that. But there, it really is a Frankenstein factory. Are we sure he wasn't at like a mental health facility? Regardless, yes, cloning is a thing. We have seen even our own celebrities getting replaced, getting taller, tattoos being taken off of them. Different people looking like they're wearing, we're going to keep it going. They're all wearing masks. If we if we shed a glass of water or any container of water in a ring, uh, the water immediately begins to emit light. You can't see it with the naked eye, but it can be measured with various instruments. And we find full visible spectrum as well as ultraviolet being naturally emitted from the light under stimulation by this energy field. Um, the other thing I do, I use my tools on energizing water. And that's absolutely fantastic. My energy level has gone up tremendously. Since we are light bodies and all of our communications within the body takes place through electrons or photons, the amount of photonic energy in the body is increased. Consequently, the energy level of the body is increased. So drinking water potentized with the ring has quite beneficial effects in both short and long term. I love the rings and um, I have big ones, big rings underneath my bed and I sleep over them. So I have them where, you know, along the chakras and I find that that just helps me sleep really well. Um, I also love the little rings that I can wear as bracelets. So if I have a long day typing at the computer, then I'll often put these on my arms. And I find that it just really helps me remain calm. And I've, I've never you know, had any repetitive stress injury or any problems that are associated with a lot of computer use. I use it on my food as well. I put the food on a plate and that on top of uh, the rings. I find with fruit, for example, and I had some friends found and I cut up some apples and some pears. And, you know, after a few minutes, these apples, they go brown. Well... My friend Jackie came round and she said, hang on a minute, how long have these apples been on the plate for? They're not going brown. I said, I know, they're on these rings. So it's fantastic. I seem to give extra life force, energy. And, you know, as we're made out of water, I mean, mainly water, it has a wonderful effect on you. Yo, are tensor rings similar to like copper and stuff? This sounds so similar. Like copper also, when you preserve it in a copper pyramid, they're like refrigerators. They last forever. Um, that light is emitted through water. That is crazy. I need to read more into this, but it really 
feels like uh, water is definitely chargeable, so do what you can. Charge your water. For athletes or anyone sporting a toothless grin. It's a Canadian invention that not only plugs the gaps, but fills the holes with brand new pearly whites. CTV's Deborah Shirey explains. Chris Miller getting some time in uh -oh. spot and Ryan Smith is down and hurt. It was a jaw-dropping shot as Edmonton Oiler Ryan Smith takes a puck to the face and yes, those are his teeth. It's too late for Smith's smile, but researchers at the University of Alberta could have a cure for future toothless hockey grins. An ultrasound device that regrows human teeth. Tariq Albiali was researching jaw growth in rabbits. Accidentally, when I applied the ultrasound, I found the lower incisor grow, grow, grow. Albiali is the first to try the treatment on humans. After 20 minutes a day, new teeth started to grow in a month. With this device, we'll get this roots together, held them together. Yo, that's crazy. Accidentally, he added chemical X to the thing, and thus the power puff. Wait, wait, wrong thing, wrong thing. Yes, he, he, this guy could have figured it out. We can grow teeth. We can grow teeth. They just won't tell us. We have to talk about my neighbor. She can prove this point in ways that I can't because of her starting school and teachers and how some are very stern and some are very loving and nurturing. And considering that some kids might need a stricter, more aggressive approach, she was like, I don't know about that. It's just when they're that little, it's just so easy to ruin a kid, like break their confidence, break their spirit. And then she told me about when she started school and how the teachers back then were not kind and all the kids were supposed to help clean up and the job that she got was sweeping. One of the teachers didn't like her technique of using the broom. The teacher insulted her and shamed her and completely embarrassed her because she didn't like how she was sweeping. This vivid memory, the shame and embarrassment has stuck with her well over 80 years. If you don't think the things that you say stick with a kid, you're wrong. I remember tons of instances that are similar to this, but it doesn't carry the same weight because I'm in my 30s. Some people just see kids and how little they are and they think that they can get away with saying certain things because they're not going to remember. Just because they're little doesn't mean they're not going to remember everything. And that was just one teacher at a school that she went to. Imagine if that kind of voice was coming from her parent day after day after day. Being overly critical of a little kid that's still learning just isn't necessary. Embarrassment and shame is so powerful. Bro, embarrassment and shame is how gym bros are born. Um, interesting. I definitely can relate to this. And I don't think it just refers to little kids. Even as an adult, do good things. Do positive things. Be kind to one another. Don't be the evil bully that you want it to be in school. Don't do that. Stop that. Why are you trying to be a bully? That's the wrong way. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep it going. Listen, a gorilla can eat nothing but vegetation and then put on size like this. And people's comments are, oh, gorillas' gut microbiomes are different than us. What you don't seem to wrap your head around is that we are the most divine, advanced, sentient life forms on this plane of existence. How do you not grasp that? The people in power understand that low vibrational light becomes matter and high vibrational matter becomes illuminated. They worship the 3D construct. They are Canaanites. They are cannibals. They practice Baal worship and human sacrifice. They practice consuming flesh. You don't understand the hierarchy of what you're in. You don't understand what you are participating in. Oh, but you need B12s and you need protein. For over a year, I participated in what I now call the celestial fasting method, where you only eat on Monday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and I was only eating raw fruit and vegetation. When you don't eat for three whole days, your body goes into homeostasis, ketosis, and you activate your growth hormone. And I noticed that you need minerals. You don't need protein. The precursor to everything is minerals. If we went to school and we learned about alchemy like we're supposed to, you would understand that the body is composed of minerals, composed of the 12 cell salts. You need to find out what you're deficient in and you need to start taking those minerals. You need to get them from natural sources. Yeah, definitely minerals keep you healthy. I'm not sure if this guy's a bodybuilder or not, but when it comes to sports medicine and bodybuilding, I'm going to trust the ex experts. They've been doing it for years. They figured out what grows stuff and what makes you look more muscular or vascular or whatever you're trying to be. And definitely if you're trying to be healthy. Everything this guy said uh, sounds good. All right, we're going to do just four more. 
teach your body just for 15 minutes a day what it would like to feel gratitude, what it would be like. And our data shows that you take someone to do that for four days, three times a day. They make a immunoglobulin called immunoglobulin A. It's your body's natural flu shot. It's the greatest immune chemical we have. 50% increase in four days. Where is that chemistry coming from? They're not taking anything. It's coming from within them, right? You could actually program your autonomic nervous system to make a pharmacy of chemicals that causes growth and repair to happen in the body. And that's exactly what we're discovering. And when you change your state of being like that every day, get ready because you're going to start having synchronicities and opportunities <laughs> and coincidences and weird things start happening in your life to prove to you that you're actually the creator of your life instead of the victim of your life. Absolutely. Teach Yo, you manifest. You do what you want. I'm manifesting that future Teddy's got a Lambo. Make it happen. I mean, I'm I'm making it's already happened. It's already happened. It's all the same. We're projecting this. All right, three more. Man is not living in 2050. You just live in the United States of America. She's right. China is not in the year of 2050, and neither is Japan. You just live in America. You see, we used to say the same thing. It became this repetitive thing when we went to other countries. Oh wow, they don't have this in America. America doesn't have this or. Man, where has this been my whole life? High speed rail, affordable healthcare, nice infrastructure. The reality is, this is how life should be. This is how our tax dollars should be spent. As tax paying citizens, we deserve the best public services, at least. Hmm, I wonder where all the money is going. But anyway, it's 2025. Upgrades to daily public services it is almost as if they care more about upgrading our phones versus upgrading daily essentials. It was just the other day when we realized that none of these third world countries outside the US are in the future. Their government just knows how to put tax dollars to use in a different way. Could you imagine how the USA would look if they positively innovated technology? It is definitely not normal to see people struggling or homeless. A lot of the things that people think are normal in the US definitely are not. Once you step out of the comfort zone and travel, you really begin to understand what is supposed to be normal and how public systems. Yeah, 100% travel and you will start to appreciate what you have and what other countries have. And you'll also learn that, hey, other places are also fun to live in. It's also fun to travel. Um, expand your mind. Don't let me do the traveling for you. You also travel as well. Also, stay home, stay safe is a thing. To stay home, stay safe. Stay home, stay safe. This man built an anti-gravity levitating machine using beetles that could turn invisible. Viktor Gerbenikov was a self-proclaimed Russian scientist, biologist, etnomologist, and paranormal researcher. Best known for his claim to have invented a levitation platform that operated by attaching dead insect body parts to the bottom of it. It all happened by mistake one day while trying to look at a beetle shell under a microscope. When he went to put another one in, it slipped out from his tweezers and hung in the air while rotating. He claims certain natural materials, especially beetle wing cases, have anti-gravity properties. These materials allow them to interact with the Earth's magnetic field to cancel out gravity. Is this why the scarab beetle was the most popular amulet in ancient Egypt? His discovery of this technology allegedly allowed him to invent an anti-gravity platform powered by this cavity structural effect. The gravity plane is described in his book, My World, and could achieve speeds up to 1400 miles per hour while invisible and completely silent. The device had the ability to avoid detection because it was able to bend light around it. Anyone who observed it from the ground saw instead of it, a light sphere or a disc or a cloud with sharply outlined edges. After the publication of his book, he was told it was forbidden to publish his information and his book was censored Man, someone needs to recreate this i think someone did and they're like wait it actually works it's this is the pogo stick levitating guy i love this i love this i feel like it could be true just like the water powered car engine guy was silenced this guy was silenced too they didn't let him tell us how he did it Imagine we all could be levitating and we didn't need airplanes anymore. And we all got our own levitating pogo sticks. All right, we're going to do just one more. Just one more to close them all. All of the shit that just recently happened with Bank of America and Wells Fargo, that wasn't a system outage or a mistake. That was on purpose. I made a video about this months ago that they took down. 
because I work in oil and gas. Someone that I've worked for owns an oil company. He's a billionaire, so he knows way more than me. And I ask him about things like this all the time. He told me months ago that his own financial advisor told him to get his money out of these big banks like Bank of America and Wells Fargo, Chase, because it wasn't a mistake that deposits weren't going through. That was a test to see exactly how rowdy the peasants were going to be. And I don't care if you don't believe me. Don't, dude. This is for people that don't live with their heads up their ass. And I just want to make people aware of these things. And I asked him, what could we do? What should we do? Just normal people that aren't billionaires and elites. Suggestions he had were go to a credit union or go to a very local bank if you have one. One that is just in your area. Get your money out of all these big institutions because this is not, this is going to happen again. They're testing it first, like what they did to people in Venezuela and in Greece. So this wasn't a mistake. They're going to see how far they can push this before they actually flip that switch. And don't fucking think that it won't happen. Have you seen our country? Have you seen all the shit we're letting them get away with? Yeah, this is crazy. Yo, this uh, text here is very distracting, but um, very, very interesting thing. I definitely am a believer in spreading out where your wealth is don't just have all your cookies in one basket have them spread out just in case one fails you have alternate methods to continue from uh where that failure is and we've seen this from banks um in china real estate banks when they collapsed people weren't able to withdraw their funds and they were surrounding the banks going i need money i need money don't be in that situation put your wealth where it needs to be and if you don't have uh wealth to be spread apart you know, that's when you start. Even if it's 10 cents a day, you start from somewhere. You start small, you grow big. Um, yeah, I love this. All right, guys, you made it to the end. How'd you do? I'll, I'm starting to think I this and maybe it was a little bit more longer form rather than shorter form. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. I know the true goons would be. But yeah, very, very interesting uh, clips this time around. There should be videos on your screen now. Click on either one of them. Continue your goon fix. The one in the middle, you can subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Triple cheese. Wake up, wake up.